believe that that blood that he shed is for you and me. Come on, give him the praise he deserves. The blood will never lose its power. Aren't we happy to hear that? That the blood of Jesus Christ still is available, still is applicable, and still is relevant to us today in 2020. Good evening to you and welcome to Jamaica Union Conferences. Let's talk about him. Online digital evangelistic series combined with all the fields in the Jamaica Union Conference across the entire territory. I want to welcome those of you who are watching us on CTL, NCS, Starcom, Quest in Lucy, St. Thomas Cable, Satcom, Astra Portland and Black Rock, Intech in Buff Bay, Gemini in Anato Bay, Cable One in Highgate, Pro Cable in Stony Hill, West Star in Trelawney, and Com Cable in Grange Hill. To those of you who are listening on NCU 91.1, 91.3, and 91.5, good evening to you. To those of you who are watching via the Flow Television Network, 188 and 617 Flow Television Channel, rather, that is NCU TV, 188 and 617. Good evening and welcome. To across the entire conferences, we are actually streaming on our YouTube and Facebook platforms and also on our conference pages as well as Let's Talk About Him app and also www.ltah.org. Welcome, and we want to invite you this evening once more to invite your friends to share and to host individuals so they can be a part of this spiritual encounter with Jesus Christ. It is very important as well that you note the numbers for both prayer as well as for decision making. We have specific lines for both. This evening at the close of the program, as we are praying to close the prayer of consecration, we will also be lifting up your prayer requests that you have placed in our chats across as many of them as possible that we can identify and that we can share. But be assured that whether you hear it on air or not, your, your prayer teams across the entire Jamaica Union territory are actively engaged in prayer. So thank you very much for sharing the numbers. Thank you so very much for sharing the pages. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for engaging with us as each evening we, sh we bring a piece of the gospel to you in new form. This evening, we're very happy to have a lineup with you that it will be based upon a number of efforts. We have a special feature this evening, which will be a special health feature. And so I want you to ensure that you get ready as Dr. Hamilton prepares to share with us her perspective on healthy living and healthy matters. So as Pastor Dane Fletcher prepares to come this evening, we actually will be postponing our testimony segment. So we're going to throw at this time to the Osana praise uh, as they do for us our theme song. But just before we get there, I want to ensure that those of you who are on the conference pages, that you are with us. And so this evening, I'm starting out with East Jamaica Conference. And I want to say good evening to those individuals who are there. Patricia Bernard, Nathaniel Davis, Veronica Burke, Georgia Blackman, Joan McCoy, Ellie Melanin. Uh, we have Claudette Cummins, uh, those of you who are there, please let us know which part of the island you're from. So if you're in EJC, remember, just put EJC and tell us exactly which district or which area or community that you are actually from. At this time, welcome to Let's Talk About Him. This is our theme song, done once more by Osana Praise. <laughs>
pray. Dear Father in heaven, we give you thanks for your amazing grace toward us. We give you thanks for this, another opportunity we have been given to come before you, dear Father, to give you thanks, to give you praise, and also to hear a word from you. Dear Father, we have sinned and fallen short of your glory, but you have reminded us in your words and through your mind servant that truly, though we have sinned, the blood of Jesus was shed on Calvary's cross and it is still powerful even today. Dear Father, as your people wait before you, as they listen to the various songs tonight, as they listen to your words of hope and hope and words of life, we pray, dear Father, that your words will find a lodgment in our hearts, that someone may be blessed, that someone may be enriched, and your people shall be ready for your coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Dr. Michelle Hamilton here with your health tip for tonight. We want to talk a little bit about your skin, babies, and some of the things that we are experiencing because of COVID-19 as it relates to our hygiene. Now, for those of you with um, skin conditions such as eczema and you have easy irritations, we know that we have to do a lot of sanitizing going into buildings. One of the things that you can do is to walk with your own hand sanitizer. If you are at home, try to not to use hand sanitizers at home, but to wash your hands with simple soap and water instead. And always ensure that you have some form of moisturizer for your hands at the end of it. For children though, we want to be very careful, especially babies. We want to use simple soap and water for their hygiene. In addition, when you use moisturizers, ensure that the moisturizer is in a pump bottle as kids will have a tendency of just sticking their fingers in the bottle and you don't want to transfer anything to your bottle of moisturizer. So we encourage you using a pump bottle instead. In addition to that, make sure that you keep your children quite hydrated and protect their respiratory health. Do not put a mask on a child that is under two years old. Thank you for joining us again for another health feature. Have a wonderful night. Thank you so very much, Dr. Williams, for those health tips relevant to us in these times. Over at Central Jamaica Conference YouTube page, we're saying good night uh, to a number of churches. They are definitely lining up at CJC, Ginger Ridge SDA, Cumberland uh, SDA in Clarendon, Cedar Grove SDA, Mike Town SDA, Twickenham SDA is also in the house. Hans Penn SDA is in the house. Let me see which other church is here. Gregory Park, SDA, Maypin, Maypin, SDA, Palmetto Gardens, SDA, uh, Treadlight Gardens, Tre Treadlight, um, SDA, Mandeville, SDA Church, Cedar Grove again in there, and uh, we have Albion, SDA Church. Thank you so very much to our friends, our colleagues, our our members in the Central Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, this evening, we have our quiz that is actually posted, and I want to emphasize our friends who have done well. Uh, we have last night over 177 individuals who have participated in the quiz and who actually scored 100%. And we want to emphasize our non-Adventist friends who are Samantha Edwards, Hyacinth Blackwood, Shauna McLean, Alison Anglin Daly, Tanisha Small, uh, Joan Martin. Those are some of the winners we have. This quiz is posted in the chat. You can be able to click on the link and to be able to do that quiz. Uh, hopefully by the time our speaker, Pastor Dean Hal Fletcher, gets up on the lectern, you would have completed that and submitted your scores. Congratulations to all of you who actually have done the quiz, are participating, and are engaging with us each evening. We greatly appreciate it. We're thankful for that. And so at this time, Elder Philip Castell, who is the communications, public affairs, and religious liberty uh, leader, is going to be actually doing the introduction of our speaker. But just as we get ready for that, let me, let me just take one more conference page. Let me go over to the Northeast Jamaica Conference YouTube page. Uh, it's easier for me to pull that up than the others when I'm on air, so bear with me. I uh, want to say good evening to all those who are in Hampstead SDA, Claremont SDA in St. Mary, Oracobessa is here, and so we say good evening to you as well. And let me see who else is there. Uh, Leisha Gay Vassal, good night to you. Valesia Taff, Yashika Grant is also there. Nadine Silvera, Ricardo Porteus 
you're in northeast or in east we need to check that out bonnie gate sda church is also here and we say good evening to you galena burnt savannah also here stanton sda church fellow church in fellowship portland is also in the house rosend 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 sda church first time hearing that one i hope i got that one right rose andrews um rosend sda church so we want to ask of you to subscribe to like to share and to get your friends to join in in the let's talk about him remember you can sign up for our bible lessons at www.ltah.org you can download the app either on your android or your iphones and you can be able to do the bible lessons and hopefully you'll be able to complete those in time for sabbath if you're already on your way then kudos to you at this time we're going to be moving over to elder philip castell no, I am advised that it's not Elder Philip Castell. It's Pastor Joseph. Oh, it is Elder Philip Castell who will be at this time in doing the introduction of the speaker, speaker tonight. Is no stranger to the thousands of viewers who have been joining us nightly since the series began on October three. Pastor Dane Al Fletcher is the evangelist and the main speaker of the Let's Talk About Him online digital evangelistic series. Above this, he is a servant of God and the one who has been anointed by the Holy Spirit to tell the world about Jesus, especially at a time like this when there is so much uncertainty, anxiety, and apprehension about the future. Pastor Fletcher is an ordained minister of the gospel and currently serves as the Youth Ministries Director at the Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, where he is responsible to leading young people to Christ through his ministry. He's a man of God, a talented preacher, a lover of young people, and one who is passionate about sharing Christ with just about anyone who will listen. He's happily married to the beautiful Khadij Fletcher and together they have one son, Caleb, who is the joy of their, of their lives. I invite you to uh, give him your undivided attention tonight as he shares with us another soul-inspiring message. But before he comes, we will be favored with beautiful music. ship of your life is tossing on the sea of strife you need someone and if you feel so all alone and your house is not a home you need someone Someone to just be there You need someone I give you Jesus He's the peace that passes all understanding Oh yes I give you Oh 
pressures all around keep your spirits to the ground you need someone and if your body is in pain and your health you can't regain you need someone and if at times when you have tried with all the strength you have inside it it seems that you have failed remember on the cross he nailed all the, the bitterness, bitterness and, and grief to give you peace and sweet relief he is that someone that you need so i give you jesus he's the peace that passes on understanding oh yes i give you jesus he's a perfect love that cast it out all fears i give you jesus he's the water that you drink Tonight, Jesus is yours. And remember, there is absolutely no other name given among men under the heaven whereby we must be saved. And for this reason, it is my joy to speak to Jesus this evening. Our Father and our God, we stand in need of power. We stand in need of your help. It's not my mother, it is not my father, but it is me, O Lord, and I stand in need of your divine anointing. I pray, O God, that the words spoken will be clothed in the glory of Jesus Christ and will be attended by the power of his Holy Spirit in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now, there are two things that I'd really like to share with you this evening. The, the, the first, for me, is the most important. It's the most important that come this Sabbath, we will be having a big baptism. We will be having a big baptism. In fact, a number of pastors have been calling to pray with me and encourage me in fact one called just before i came out to speak with you this evening and he told me that he has been praying for me and that he has a number of persons who have already signed up for baptism it will be a holy ghost filled party in heaven on sabbath because there is joy in heaven over one sinner that repents that sinner can be you tonight my brother my sister my cousin my aunt my grandpa my grandma and i i also got a word for those who are orphans and those who have been adopted so it doesn't matter the category in which you find yourself this special invitation is for you and you can cause a party in the kingdom of heaven while we're on this, I said Sabbath will be a 
big baptism. And I also have another big announcement which I will make a little later. I will make it later in the week. We have a big announcement to make. But for tonight, my friends, for tonight we are looking at the all-important subject of open borders, closed security. And I must admit, I, I must confess that folk have been praying for me and my voice, and I pray that God will be with me. I, I should let you know that for me, it is a struggle. I've never had this kind of an experience to begin a campaign, and I've been doing campaigns from my teen years. So the devil wants even my hoarseness to be a stumbling block, but I declare this evening in the name of Jesus Christ that the devil will not stop God's mission. God has a message for you. Yes, you, my friend, God has a special message for you. And while we're here, I just want you to be assured. In fact, I, I just want to tell you that briefly, briefly, I'll tell you this, that for me, my objective in life is not to be a pastor. I, I could care nothing more about being a pastor. I, 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 they could stop me from being a pastor. Yes, yes, yes. That, that's not my objective. I, I, I don't want to be known for anything in life. I, I just want to make it to the kingdom of God. Yes, and, and, and yes, you may say, I don't have any ambition. I, I don't care what you think about me. I, I really want to make heaven my home. And I hope and I pray that by God's grace, you will decide to make heaven your home as well. That's my heart's desire, that if I don't accomplish anything in life, I want to see my Lord and my God. I want to live, I want to reign with Jesus forever and forever. But while we are here this evening, we're talking about open borders, tight security. Open borders, tight security. My beloved brothers and sisters, I ask you if you have your Bibles, and I believe that this evening you will get it on your screens. And I hear somebody say, Amen. Yes, I can hear you. You will get the word of God. We begin with St. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. And a similar account is shared in St. Luke 13, verses 23 and 24. The Bible reads, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Jump over now to St. Luke chapter 13, verses 23 and 24. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate, for many I, for many I say unto you will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Many will seek to enter in and shall not be be able. And if you look at the passage, it is not S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T. -E it is not straight in that regard. It really means austere or it's difficult or it may mean that you have obstacles closely aligned at the entrance of the gate. I want you to understand that if there be any obstacle at the gate of the kingdom, that obstacle is not designed by God. It is of demonic design. But believe me, brother, believe me, sister, believe me, cousin, believe me, my friend, it doesn't matter how difficult it is for you to go to the kingdom of God. God has a very special place for you. In fact, I want you to know that you should not allow anybody to look at your room with your name written on it. In fact, it's not just a room. It is a mansion. And if you go even to St. John 14, you will understand that Jesus said, 
that in my father's house are many mansions. Look at the experience. You understand that for us in this life, when we speak about a mansion, it is a massive, it is a huge, it is a humongous house. Now, now think about Jesus in his house. There are many mansions. What a house. I want to let you know that you've got a mansion up in yonder which Jesus has gone to prepare for you. And you should allow nothing and no one to prevent you from entering. Now, my beloved brothers and sisters, as we consider the all-important matter of open borders, close security. I should emphasize that as disturbing as the pandemic is, there are many lessons to learn from it. It teaches while there are many independent nations uh, around the world, very few, if any, can truly survive on their own. For example, Jamaica gained independence some 58 years, two months, one week, and one day ago. Yet, after such a mighty long time, our main foreign exchange earner is tourism. This spells danger for our beloved nation, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic. Our borders, my friends, you understand, were reopened for the simple fact that we cannot survive on our own. It is not only that, but for our economy to survive, for our economy to be vibrant, money has to move through the established systems. And one of these such systems is the border security, wherein workers who happen to gain their livelihood through this system for their families to survive, for the taxi drivers on whom they depend to take them to work, for the person whom they, from whom they buy lunch to survive, for all of these people to survive, things have to remain open. We understand that when the borders were open, things were a little bit more tight. They were a little bit more secure to the extent that when persons flouted with the COVID-19 protocols, many of them foreigners, they would be confined to state-run facilities. My beloved brothers and sisters, we have tried to contain COVID-19. We have tried to close the borders, but the borders could not be closed for a long time. If the borders are closed, then the economy will be in problem. I want to let you know, Jamaica is not the only such nation. Many other nations around the world have to open borders in order to survive. But I want somebody, you my friend, I want you to understand very carefully this evening that unlike Jamaica, Jamaica and unlike other nations which are dependent on other people in order to survive in the kingdom of God, God the Almighty makes all provision and does not need anybody in order to survive. God can stand on his own. God can take care of his own people and we should understand that God has an open border to enter into his eternal kingdom. While the border is open, you got to know that the security is tight. Think for a moment, if Jamaica had no open border, if all the cases of COVID-19 in the first wave happened to be resolved, then we would not have an infection at this time. I want you to understand that God, he has a good, a reliable screening system, and God looks at what is happening in the world. He looks at what is happening in his kingdom. His kingdom is pristine, pure. There is no form of sin, no form of defilement in his eternal kingdom. And for this reason, though God has an open border for anybody to enter into his kingdom, security his sight, because God does not want the infection of sin to enter into his eternal kingdom. The border is open, but the security is tight. Open borders, tight security. My beloved brothers and sisters, while we contemplate this altogether important message, we should note the text is clear. 
the straight gate and the narrow road, they lead to life. The road is considered straight because it has obstacles which jut out in the way. The obstacles, I suggest to you, are the snares of the devil who wants you to be discouraged and turn back. I suggest to you that the obstacles in the way serve as the devil's impediments to slow you down until you eventually stop. The obstacles may make the road narrow to the extent that you can only carry that which is necessary. There are many who have started the Christian journey, but because of the obstacles in the way, they give up, they stop, they turn back. But tonight, if you have given up, if you have stopped, I've come by here to tell you that God's word for you is that it is time for you to turn around and keep your eyes on Jesus. Do not, my brother, do not, my sister, lose your focus. Just keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Now I declare to you that while the road may be difficult, we will not travel alone. Because Jesus Christ, he himself, declared in St. John 14, verse 6, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And in the same chapter, St. John chapter 14, verse 14 to verse 18, Jesus says, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. I, I want you to understand that elsewhere in scriptures, it says that you have not because you ask not. I don't know what your need is tonight. It doesn't matter how big or how great your need is. If God could have caused a raven to feed Elijah, if God could have made a highway through the Red Sea, if God could have caused fire to come down from heaven on Mount Carmel. It doesn't matter what your need is tonight. If God, through Jesus Christ, could have caused Lazarus to come from death to life, God can do anything for you. It doesn't matter what your need is tonight. Just ask God, and he will attend to you. And then the Bible continues. We looked at it last week. If ye love me, Keep my commandments. Look and see what Jesus says. But in verse 16 he continues. And I will pray the Father. That he shall give you another comforter. That may be. That may abide with you forever. And when I look at what it means. To have the comforter. Uh, the, the comforter serves. <laughs> Lord help me Jesus tonight. The comforter serves as. Helper. Advocate. And comforter. That's who the Holy Spirit is tonight. So while the road may be rocky, while the journey may be difficult, you're not traveling alone. You've got the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, it's God's appointed agent. Can I tell you tonight that the Holy Spirit has been assigned to you as your life coach. The Holy Spirit is here to guide you aright. The Holy Spirit, even though the enemy is fighting against your soul, the Holy Spirit is your close protection officer. You got to let somebody know that you've got your own CPO. God has assigned the Holy Spirit to protect you. God has assigned the Holy Spirit to guide you. God has assigned the Holy Spirit to you so you can keep on the straight and the narrow way. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He's there to be with you. So he's here to guide you, to help you along the way. And listen to what the Bible continues by saying. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So, so, so we understand, beloved brothers and sisters, that the Holy Spirit is our helper. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. So while we may get weary along the journey, never forget that God has sent us help in the form of the Holy Spirit. Now God in his goodness has also said that while we seek to travel along the journey of life, even as expressed in Hebrews 12, 
we should be careful of those besetting sins, those darling sins that we so dearly love, those sins that will impede our movement, those sins that will prevent us from making that altogether important decision of being committed to Jesus Christ. We should avoid those sins and be on the straight and narrow path. We should never forget, too, that this journey involves us fighting against the enemy. For we understand in 2 Corinthians 10, verses 4 to 6, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. And I wish I had time tonight to elaborate on those strongholds. But whatever your stronghold is. As you journey along this straight path. It can be outdone in the name of Jesus Christ. It can be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible continues in verse 5. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. My beloved brothers and sisters, I, I want to jump over now. I want to jump over to Philippians 2 verses 12 and 13. So that you know that you are not alone. In fact, I will emphasize the, the fact that God says that, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye also, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. But while you may be saying you can't do it on your own, God gives hope in verse 13. For God says, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I want you to know this evening, my beloved brothers and sisters, it may be a difficult road, but God is here to help you by the power of his Holy Spirit. I wish I had time. To tell you that for me, it has not been an easy road. Ministry at times can seem meaningless. Ministry at times can feel lonely and difficult times. In fact, one night after church, back in 2012, I got the sad news that my cousin, who was like a brother and his father and two others, were brutally murdered in my community back in Rejoin Hanover. It was the greatest blow that I've ever felt. It shook me real hard. I felt violated and other things in my experience. May 2012, a very tough year. But in the fullness of time, God would have sent Somebody to encourage me. My professor from NCU, my brother and friend, Dr. Denton Rowan, out of the blue would have sent me a message. He said to me, Dane, I want to remind you that God has big plans for you. Dane, I want to remind you that I don't know even now what you're going through, but for some reason... God has inspired me to send you this message. This message which Jesus said to Peter. Peter, that Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you. I don't know if Dr. Rowe knew what he did at that time. But God sent him along to push me a little further into, into the kingdom. I don't know what you're going through. But God has sent me tonight to push you along the narrow path to push you a little further into the kingdom whatever is happening along your journey whatever difficulty you may face God has the Holy Spirit to push you to nudge you to jerk you just to move you and the other day the other day the other day I was in a little meeting and I heard a youngster I don't even remember his name he said this, that progress is progress. It doesn't matter how small it is. Tonight, I want to let you know that you should make progress into the kingdom. Tonight, you should move a little closer to the kingdom. Allow nothing, not the difficulty of Christianity. Yes, it is difficult, but by the grace of God, it is worth it. It is difficult, but it is worth it. 
Now the next thing I want to share with you, apart from the fact that the road may be difficult, but God sends us help, is that the broad road leads to destruction. The broad road leads to destruction. God wants everybody to be saved. And he gives everybody equal opportunity to be saved. There are open borders, but tight security. And if you'll allow me, I'll take a drink at this moment. So God, God wants everybody to be saved. There are open borders, but tight security. He's not waiting on the crowd to choose to follow him. He's not waiting on the crowd to enter this narrow way, not this narrow road. I, I submit to you that when we have elections, even the winning party can lose the popular vote and end up being the ruling party depending on the number of seats that that party wins. But I want to let you know that God does not need your vote in order to be God. God cannot be outvoted. God doesn't need you in order to be God. In other words, you being on God's side does not make God any more good or make God any more godly. But if you are on God's side, you are better. You will become your best. So the best place to be, the best place to be is on the Lord's side. I wish I could sing, I lean, I lean, I lean, I lean. I'm leaning on the Lord's side. Can, can I tell you tonight that it, it doesn't matter if I lean. It doesn't matter even if I fall. But where I want to be is on the Lord's side. Oh, my beloved brothers and sisters, the text clearly says, few find the narrow gate and many head down the broad road. It is not that all could not enter, but some do not even care about entering. Some don't care about entering. While there are some who want to go, but they do not make it. Can I tell you that there are going to be some wonderful people, good, good people, good, good people, good, good people, ha, 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 good, good people who will go to hell with heaven in mind. Some people, sadly, will go to hell with heaven in mind just because they cannot have their own way. As we look at this, my beloved brothers and sisters, we are reminded by the philosophy of the Polish sociologist Zygmunt Bauman that we're living in a time dubbed liquid modernity where people are individualistic and secularistic. People just want to do things to satisfy their own desires and people are moving with the flow of what is happening around them just to satisfy their desires. But while people are moving with the flow in this individualistic society where people are concerned about three persons only, that is me, myself, and I, I submit to you that it doesn't matter what you accomplish in life until you decide to make God your choice. Are you hearing me? Because if you would accomplish everything else and you lose your soul, all that you would accomplish would be but in vain. And just in case you do not believe me, the good book, the Holy Bible, says in St. Mark 8, verses 36 to 38, for what shall a man, for, for, for what, shall it, what shall it profit what, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me. Look, ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. Of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. I want to let you know tonight that eternity hangs in the balance. It makes absolutely no sense to be, as Paul says to Timothy, to be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. I want to remind you tonight that Jesus is still the way. It, it, it is not, my friends, it is not 
that those who are on the road, the broad road, do not want to make it to the kingdom, but they find it difficult to give up the pleasures of this world. Some people tonight may be saying just one last time, even though we are under lockdown in many places, some people are saying just one last time party. I, I want to let you know that you, you do not know what may happen. I have found that many people, many young people uh, have been at the wrong place at the wrong time and they never made it home from that last party. Some people may be saying tonight just one last little draw of that little spliff but it may cause you to get in a rage and you do something silly to the extent that you end up losing your life. You may be saying one last drink, but that one last drink can lead to your addiction. That one last drink, uh, may, my friends, uh, may lead even to you doing something silly and end up in a terrible accident. That one last drug, my friend, one last drug smuggling, you may be locked behind may cause you to be locked behind bars. And in fact, I've seen people who would have swallowed, I've seen people who would have swallowed drugs in order to get a better life. They never made it because that drug which they swallowed ended taking their very own life. My friends, it is not good to want to be in the kingdom and at the same time partaking of the pleasures of sin. If you mean Jesus, Get in line. If you mean Jesus, follow him all the way. If you mean Jesus, surrender tonight. If you mean Jesus, look to him and live. My friends, I want to let you know too that if we do not receive help along the narrow way, we will end up losing our souls. I mentioned earlier that our help, which Jesus promised, is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us into all truth. So if you want to find truth, you follow the lead of the Holy Spirit as you study the Bible. Now look at what the Bible says in St. Matthew 12, verses 31 and 32. The Bible says, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven you. Forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy, Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. My dear brothers and sisters, I want you to look at it. I want you to look at it. I said that along the straight and narrow, the person of the Holy Spirit, and, and I say person because Jesus said, when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Not, not when it, the spirit of truth, is come. But when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will lead you and he will guide you into all truth. And now Jesus says in Saint Matthew 12, verses 31 and 32, that all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men except Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. It is for this reason the Holy Spirit is our last help into the kingdom. Can I tell somebody that? The Holy Spirit is our last help into the kingdom. People disobeyed, dishonored God the Father way back in the Garden of Eden in the Old Testament. They turned their backs against God. Jesus Christ, His Son, came to this earth. He, the way, the truth and the life. He was forsaken and rejected. Jesus was forsaken and rejected. The way, the truth, and the life was forsaken and rejected. And here we have it. Jesus says, even if you would have forsaken me, even if you would have rejected me, I've come by to send you the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will help you. The Holy Spirit will guide you. The Holy Spirit will comfort you. But if you, my brother, if you, my sister, if you, my friend, if you, my neighbor, if you, grandma, if you, grandpa, if you, adopted one, if you, whomever you may be, if you decide to reject the 
prompting of the Holy Spirit, you will end up committing the unpardonable sin. And I want to let you know that there are many people who are on this broad road who are committing the unpardonable sin. And the unpardonable sin doesn't mean that you cannot get pardon for it. Because there is no sin which God can't forgive. I want you to know the unpardonable sin becomes unpardonable simply because you fail to heed the call, the prompting of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. The Holy Spirit is calling you to a place to get on the narrow road. The road may be difficult, but you've got help. The road may be challenging, but you've got assistance. The Holy Spirit will be with you even until the very end. Tonight, my brother, tonight, my sister, whatever it is that is distracting you, leave it behind in the name of Jesus Christ. You got to decide that it is better to go into the kingdom of God, even if you are lame, rather than to gain the pleasures of this sin with a healthy body and end up in the furnace of hell. Somebody, you my brother, you my sister, you my cousin, you everybody, whatever you are doing, please note tonight that now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. There is an open border for anybody to enter in. But only those who follow the narrow way. The Holy Spirit will lead you along the straight and narrow. The Holy Spirit will protect you along the straight and narrow. And I want to let you know that sometimes the journey may be difficult. Sometimes you may end up having to give up something that may even be very good. But I've got good news for you. If you really want to have a life that is beyond this world, you got to decide to go on the straight and narrow. Allow nothing, allow no one to stop you from giving your heart to Jesus. You have now the decision card. It's your moment. You have the decision card. And you're deciding that you want to go home with Jesus. I'll share with you quickly a story. I'll share with you quickly a story. As Sister Grant gets ready to sing. Going along the narrow road will take you home to be with Jesus. Sometimes you just have to know that God will provide people in your path to get you there safely. I was at NCU. I really wanted to go home, but it was late. I forgot about going home all the way to rejoin Hanover. I went to Mandeville Town to get some food. In fact, I never even closed my room door properly at Cedar Hall. And there in Mandeville, it was about 8 o'clock that I saw my friends Christopher Harvey, Ruth Ann, and Wanda Brown. They were heading to Anchovy. I was heading to rejoin Hanover. It was nearly 8 o'clock. I went to Burger King and got me a good BK big fish. I returned and they were still in the parking lot. And after being there with them for a little bit, a Nissan AD wagon showed up. And we quickly got aboard. There were 8 of us plus the driver in the car. We made it to Savannah Lamar. We were there. We got a bus. And, and while we were leaving Savannah Lamar, the conductor said to the driver, Driver, make sure you have enough gas. Along the way, my beloved brothers and sisters, by this time, it was already after 10 o'clock. And as we were heading through the hills, just about to enter Chester Castle, that something happened. Even though the driver said everything was crisp, the bus ran out of fuel. It was late in the night. The bus ran out of fuel, but I was going home. We got another bus. Chris, Wanda, and Ruth Ann, they left the bus at Anchovy. They reached home before me in life. Some of the people who inspire you along the journey may depart the train of life before you. 
but it doesn't mean you should give up. You're still going home. I reached Montego Bay, and I got a taxi heading to Hopewell, Hanover. I reached Hopewell. By this time, it was about midnight. And at this time, not even dogs are brave enough to walk my little community in Rejoin Hanover. I looked around, no taxi. I, I, I tried to identify a taxi man whom I could trust. And then I saw this taxi guy. His, they called him Bunny. That's all I know him as. He drove a car named Original Galman. So I went to the Original Galman. It was late in the night. I introduced myself. I said, I am so and so. And he said, yes, I know your parents. And then I said, how much is it to go to rejoin? It was about the year 2001, thereabout. And at that time, he said it would cost me about $300. I had one last $500 bill in my pocket, but I was going home. It was late. When we reached rejoin, it was well after midnight. Well after midnight, my friends, it was a rough journey to go home. It was late, and I was tired, but I was going home. I gave him the $500 bill, my friends, and, and when he looked around, he said, you know what, sorry, I don't have any change. It was late in the night, he didn't have change. Uh, I, 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 $200 then would be worth much more than $500 now, but I didn't mind giving it up because I was going home. When you're going home, even though you may go through difficult times even though the bus may seem like it break down don't give up keep pressing you're going home people who may have helped you along the way may have left the journey may, may, they may have even turned back they may have even died but do not give up keep pressing on along the narrow way you're going home it may cost you in that I should have gotten back my change, but I ended up losing my $200. But $200, the value thereof, never mattered much because I was going home. And when I reached home, when I reached home, I made a little wrap on the grill. And after making that little wrap, my friends, I heard a voice saying, who is that? Is it D? D, is that you? And I said, yes, mom, it's me. It was late in the night, but mommy, for some reason, she sensed that I would be coming home. That little gate was opened, and by the time the gate was opened, mommy's arms were also opened to welcome her son home. I don't know what your situation is, but I want to let you know that God has opened borders in his kingdom. God has not only opened borders, but he also has opened arms to receive you. Tonight, tonight, you're going home. The difficulties may be many. The distractions, is, may, be, distractions may be multiplied, but you're going home. As Sister Grant Singh, Click on that link. Make your decision. While there are many options, decide to go home as you decide to be baptized and give your heart to Jesus. Some folks would rather have houses and land some folk choose pleasures and forget about their souls. But these things, I won't let them hinder me from serving my God. For I've decided to make Jesus my choice. Oh, yes, and you know the road is rough, and the going gets tough, and the hills are hard to climb. I started out a long time ago, 
But I've made up my mind In Jesus' strong arms Where no tempest can harm Yes, I am safe and secure For I've decided to make Jesus my choice Though the road be rough and thorny Trackless as the foaming sea Thou hast crossed this way before me And I'll gladly follow thee I will follow thee, my Savior Thou didst shed thy blood for me And though all men should forsake by thy grace, I'll follow thee. Tonight, tonight, my brother, tonight, my sister, my cousin, everybody, you're watching, you're deciding. You're deciding. I said that your help along the straight and narrow is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will not leave you. Even now, the Holy Spirit is thugging against your heart. And while I speak about the work of the Holy Spirit, I'm reminded of this youngster who, on a cloudy day, was there moving. He was moving. He was moving. And someone came by and asked him what he was doing. And while he moved, while he moved, uh, he said to the person, I... I'm kite flying, and then the person looked and said, you know what, I can't see your kite, so I don't know if you're really serious about what you're doing. And then the youngster said, that's all right, that's all right. You may not be able to see it, but I know it's there because I can feel the tug, I can feel the pull. You may not be able to see the Holy Spirit tonight, but I know the Holy Spirit is there. And I pray that you can feel the pull. You can feel the thug because the Holy Spirit wants to help you into the kingdom. No distraction. The Holy Spirit wants to help you. The Holy Spirit wants to pull you into the kingdom. Decide tonight. If you hear his voice, do not, do not, do not harden your hearts. But to yield to the pull of the Holy Spirit. I said, Sabbath will be a big baptism. You can decide tonight. Decide. Do not wait until tomorrow. Decide tonight. Tonight we have many persons who are praying for you right now. Praying for your decision. Praying that the Holy Spirit will seal you. Not just for time. But for eternity. Tonight is your night of victory. Tonight you have decided to make Jesus your choice. Us the Oliphant will now pray. But as he prays, I pray that you will decide. You will click that decision. The, the options are there. You choose special prayer, Bible study, recommitment to Christ. Choose baptism. Choose baptism. For he who believes and is baptized, the same shall be saved. Baptism indicates that you want to lead the, leave the broad road that leads to destruction. And you want to follow the narrow road which leads, leads to life. You're choosing. You're choosing to be baptized. You're choosing to live with Jesus forever. Make your choice. Choose life. Choose Jesus. And choose to be baptized. God bless you. Oh, our oh, God and eternal Father, we're so very grateful that we have a home. Abraham looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and whose maker is God. Like that prodigal son, Almighty Father, many times we're distracted. Our eyesight sees only the mom in, the, in the moment. We are able only to recognize 
what we think is good for us for a time, but dangerous for us for a lifetime. Like that prodigal son, many of us have wandered from the foundations of our faith. We have moved away from the values of our homeland. Many of us, Almighty Father, have lived lives which are not in keeping with the principles of the kingdom of heaven. And so this evening, like that young man, we are coming to our senses. And we're saying, Lord, I'm coming home. Coming home. Coming home. Never more to roam. Open wide thine arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home. This is the desire of some wounded, some broken, some depressed. Young man, young woman, this is the cry of the heart of someone who is tired of living in sin. Tired of living a fake life. Tired, Almighty Father, of living according to a double standard. Tired of wandering away from your fold. Who is looking for hope, looking for peace. Lord, I'm reminded of the words of those songs of this song joy is knowing Jesus loves you happiness is knowing he is mine hope is knowing where you're going when you rise living with Jesus on the other side Lord we want to make it home we want to make it beyond a city that is broken and filled with cancer filled with diabetes filled with earthly sorrow and pain and heartache. We want to be in a better place, in a better land. But Lord, for us to get there, we must make the decision now. We must open our hearts to you today. And so at this very moment, we're praying for all the requests that have come. For each individual who has typed, who have called, who have sent in a WhatsApp message. Every individual who has sent a text message asking us to pray. We're lifting up those prayer requests before you this evening. We're asking you great God of Israel to hear from heaven the cry of Jode Peart, who that three year old who will be doing a a, a, a surgery tomorrow on his tongue. Lord, we pray that you may stay the hand of the doctors, that you may stay the hand of the surgeons, that you may be with him. Cover him, Almighty Father, with your grace, with your might, with your strength. I pray for that individual who in the West Jamaica Conference chat has asked for us to lift up her husband before you because she wants him to come home. She wants him to leave the pleasures of the world and to enter into the joy of salvation. We lift up before you those family members in Northeast Jamaica Conference who are praying on behalf of their family, interceding on behalf of a soul and asking you, great God of Israel, to do exceedingly abundantly above that which they're able to ask, to think, or to imagine. Work in the situation of those who are in Canada. Work in the lives of those those who are in Barbados, in Ontario, those who have been pouring out their hearts, work for those, Almighty Father, who have been calling in the prayer lines and asking individuals to just pray and lift them up. We are asking you, you who are able to hear from heaven, you who are able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can imagine, step in the midst of individual situations tonight. Individuals are hurting. Individuals are broken. Individuals are filled with pain. Individuals are tired. Tired of living in a broken world. Tired of being broken by sin. Tired of being broken by a broken marriage. Tired of 
have been broken by a professional life that is falling apart tonight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah work mightily in the hearts of your children those whose hearts are broken to the point where words are not able to express the pain and the agony the sorrow of their heart work in the hearts of those whose, whose buckets are empty and whose cupboards almighty father require food interceding on their behalf tonight I am asking you almighty father show up for your children show somebody one more time that there is still a bomb in Gilead show somebody one more time that the God of Daniel in the midst of the lion's den is still alive show someone tonight that even though they are walking through the valley of the shadow of death that there is still power in the name of Jesus that at his name demons will flee and the earth will tremble show somebody tonight that you are not sleeping that you are alive you are on your throne and you still take care of your own you know the needs of those in Twitter land you know the needs of those in Instagram you know the needs of those on NCU radio you hear the cries of those almighty father who are locked up in their bedroom just looking through the device and they are searching for something more open up your arms to them tonight help that young man to see that when he returns home he's not returning home to a father who will criticize him he's not returning home to a father who will condemn him but he's returning home to a father who has prayed for him every day that he has been away every single day that he has been away he was looking out for you Lord I'm asking you be that father to the prodigal children of the world tonight you can bring your children safely home just like that shepherd who left the 90 and 9 and went in search on the hills in the dark of night through the bleak weather and search for that one sheep to bring him back into the fold of safety. Show someone tonight that Jesus is interested in me. Jesus is interested in my life. Jesus is interested in my hurt. Jesus is interested in my success. Jesus is interested in my future. Someone needs to know that you are interested in just one. Not the multitude but one. So Lord, if you can bring a coin safely back to its owner, if you can return a sheep safely into its fold, if you can allow a wayward son to be brought back home, we believe tonight that you're able to do it for each individual who is in this chat, who is on NCU, who will be watching this afterwards. We believe you're able to do it. And so, Lord, we leave it in your hands. We thank you that you have a better place for your children. We thank you that we have a home beyond the sky. Lord, prepare us for that place, even as you prepare that place for us. Is our asking in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tonight, I want to invite you to not let go of the mighty hand of Jesus Christ. The evangelist has spoken. The evangelist has shared with you that the borders are opened. And not only are the borders opened, but the arms of Jesus are opened wide. Opened to receive you right where you are this night. As the numbers are shared on the screen, you can send in your request. You can sign up a pledge card. You can make a decision that will seal the deal for you, not just here in October 2020, but throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. I want to thank you for joining us 
thank you for being with us. NCU 91.1. 91.3 and 91.5 on Blessed Television, Blessed TV, and its 13 affiliate network cable stations across the island. Thank you to those who have been on the platforms of North Jamaica Conference, Northeast Jamaica Conference, West Jamaica Conference, Central Jamaica Conference, and the East Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. We are so delighted that you have taken the time to be with us, to share, to engage, to like, and of course, to invite your friends to join us one more evening. This is Let's Talk About Him, Jamaica Union Conference's online digital evangelistic series on your tablet, through radio, on all media. Join us tomorrow evening. I am Omar Oliphant, and on behalf of the entire production crew, on behalf of the communication directors, the Let's Talk About Him team planning committee, I am saying to you, walk good, stay COVID-free, and let's talk about him. Don't tell me about the popular things Just tell me